I always liked Super Mario 64 when I was a kid. I remember playing it at my aunt's house all the time. Well, one day, a pop-up appeared in front of nowhere as I was watching a gameplay footage on YouTube. I was a little startled, and this was about to close the window until I realized that it was a website showing a mint condition of the copy, Super Mario 64 for sale. There was a picture and everything. I usually don't trust these things, but the feelings of nostalgia overpowered me and wanted to play it. The whole business in particular, seeing this how the owner of the game wanted the buyer to send an envelope contain $10 and the address on site. Instead of using something like PayPal, what made the things more strange was that I had tried to gain access to the website. I wrote it down on the URL, but after encountering problems with the game, the page was nowhere to be found. A few days later, after the $10 was mailed, I got a package containing the new copy of the game. The first thing I noticed when I opened the small box was that the official sticker with Mario flying in the air was apparently peeled off for some or something. In its place of where the piece of duct tape with Mario crudely dr drawn on it in permanent marker. I felt a little ripped off, but at least the game worked and I didn't care. I got out my Nintendo 64 and put the cartridge in. The screen then turned on with a familiar Mario face that you could stretch with a twist aimlessly. I remembered laughing all the time as the results as a kid and decided to mess around for all time's sake. I moved the cursor over to Mario's ear and pulled it even to proportions. I was about to do the same thing to the other ear when the TV suddenly produced loud static. Mario's old head started deforming and twisting in many ways that I didn't even know could be possible for the model. Random sound effects from the game started to play along with the static. All this was occurring and I could hear a faint voice whispering in Japanese. The voice was stammering and whimpering. I immediately shut off the game and tried again. I didn't bother with the Mario head this time. I just selected a new file and started playing. When I selected the file, the game skipped the opening monologue by Peach in the courtyard house. Mario was just placed right inside the castle. Creepier, still. Bowser didn't say anything either. I tried to ignore it and play it away. However, I also noticed that there was no music. Just dead silence. There weren't even any toads around to walk into. The only door I could enter was the Bob B Bomb from Battlefield. Now, the other doors weren't even responding to my button commands. The portrait of Bob B Bomb Battlefield was the usual picture. It was a stark with white canvas. I was trying to convince myself that these were just minor glitches and that they wouldn't affect the gameplay at all. Once I entered the portrait, the image suddenly went from blank canvas to lethal lava land painting. You know that slightly unsettling image with the frame with an evil smile? Yeah, that's when I started getting really suspicious. The mission select menu came up and yet again, another weird detail was present. Instead of the big bomb bomb um, the s with on the sun met, the mission was called Turn Back. I have no idea what drove me to press A, but it did. The level seemed normal. Everything was just how I remember it. I thought that I could finally enjoy my favorite childhood game, but when I saw him, Luigi, I was absolutely shocked. He was never in this game and his model was never even a Ma Mario palette swap. And he looked just completely original model. Luigi just stood there until I tried to approach him. He then started running on expected speeds. I followed the suit and went through the level. Strange things began happening as I pursued him. Each time I pick up a coin, the enemies and music would get slower, and the scenery would look darker in color and more morbid. It kept gradually getting worse until I collected the fifth coin. Then the music stopped. The enemies laid down on the ground like if they were dead. I was seriously freaked out but I kept chasing Luigi. I went up the hill and no cannonballs rolled down to try to knock me over. I wasn't really surprised at at this point. Luigi was just as out of sight as I ran. Once I reached the summit, 
I yet again saw another object out of place. A small cottage was all that seemed to be on the top of the hill. Luigi was nowhere to be found. The cottage was certainly old looking for a Mario game. It was old, plain, and broken down. Regardless of the cut of the fears, here's that moment I had Mario enter the cottage. As soon as the door closed, a disturbing picture of a hanged Luigi immediately popped up along with a very frightening scared chord chord. It sounded like a violent screech accompanied by a loud piano banging. Mario fell to his knees and sobbed roughly for five minutes. Then the screen erased out. I returned to the castle and Mario just slumped out of the painting. The image switched from the lethal lava land portrait to the image of Luigi, well, dead. The, the room was different at this time and it was now a small hallway. Toes with blank expressions while robes lined the sides of the hallway. There was another painting of the opposite end that was just completely and utterly scared me. It was a picture of my family and it wasn't even a photo from the Super Mario 64 was released. It was a very, very recent photo. I remember posting it for the last weekend. I reached for the on and off switch on the N64. There was no way I was going to play that anymore. However, when I flipped the switch, the game was still on. I flipped it back and forth, but to no avail. I tried unplugging the whole system, but it never left the screen, and I was still even more control of Mario. I couldn't just leave it on forever, so I kept playing until I went to the photo of my family and just jumped in. Only one mission was available, and of course this one was called Run, Don't Walk. I selected the mission, let's -a go! The level started in the flood in the hallway with platforms floating on the water. Mario just landed on one of these and the camera turned to show what was behind it. A silent black void was slowly approaching Mario and it didn't look like anything at all. It didn't even look like it was finished graphics. Just a giant blocky black blob. I started jumping from platform to platform but to no goal in sight. I kept running in the, in the darkness, but surely it was gaining speed. This kept going on for what felt like hours. I was really doubting wherever the world it would be the end. Mario was just going in circles. Finally, the black blob void thing caught up with Mario and enveloped him in darkness. He didn't scream or resist at all. It just consumed him. Mario fell out of the painting and back onto the castle. I just lost one of my free lives. The room was different now, and some of the toads were gone, and the painting looked different. My family and I were in the same positions, but our bodies were particularly decomposed. It looked like to be a real photoshopped, and it looked like someone had just took our dead bodies and posed them. Regardless, I jumped into the painting again. Mario was in a small room. There was still only one mission available called I'm Right Here, spelled in just like that. I selected the mission and prepared for the worst. Mario landed in a small, dark room, the no invisible way out. The room was empty, except for the piano at the corner. I knew what that meant. I was stuck in there with the mad piano. I approached it and started cat chasing me as always. There was no way to damage it, so I had no choice but to let Mario take damage. When he lost all of his health, the usual death animation didn't happen. Mario just got mauled by the piano as he felt his blood and guts spilled on the floor and the camera pins it panned down to the top down view of his corpse. A distorted version of the merry-go-round music from Big Boo's Haunt played and the screen slowly transitioned from the end game to the shot of the photorealistic sketch of Mario's dead body in the same view as the shot. It was very unsettling. I was crying softly as I gazed upon the image. I just lost another life. The photo of the family was shown again, but they were even more rotten than before. The view zoomed in onto the painting, like if I was warping again. I was greeted with the shot of Peach's castle from the outside. The castle was crumbling, crumbling into the ruin. The fields were on fire, and the sky was pitch black. Bowser's laugh played on a loop in the background as the children mockingly chanted, You couldn't save her. 
this went on for another long time, until a close-up of Peach's face, accompanied by an extremely loud screech, interrupted the loop without notice. Peach's mouth was wide open, as if she was screaming. Her eyes were empty black holes. Suddenly, I was, was back in the hallway as Mario once again, ejected out of the painting. Now all the toads were gone, and me and my family looked positively repulsive. Maggots were wriggling around the holes in our flesh, guts were spilling out of our bodies, my dad's eyeballs were hanging loose from its socket. It was too much to bear, but something still urged me to true John. I jumped into the painting, with only one life remaining. This time there was no name for the mission, just a blank space where a title would be. I selected the mission and Mario just landed into a very small island in the middle of the ocean. There was a solitary sign. It only read, Dive. I did it just that and entered the water. The ocean was dark and empty, and there were no fish. I wasn't even able to see anything in the water besides Mario. I swam downwards and kept going for quite some time. Yet Mario never ran out of breath. I was counted roughly 10 minutes of swimming until I decided to go back up. Just as I turned Mario around, it came. A huge, and I mean a huge Anagi he, uh, the eel came out of nowhere and swallowed Mario whole. I was dumbfounded when I went too fast. I wasn't even sure what I saw. The game over screen didn't show up. All that happened was a fade out. The photo of my family and I shown again. We were just plain skeletons now. Once again, it looked very real. I couldn't move the camera at all. It just stayed focused on the picture. I shut off the game and turned it on again, but I chose my file. But when I went to the skeleton photo of my family, I tried this about three more times before giving up. I desperately wanted to stop, but some force kept telling me to walk away. I decided to select the only other save file. The camera once again focused on the skeleton picture, but this time they were in a different position, as if they were a different family. And that, my little pretties, was Super Mario 64, a Mario Lost Gaming creepypasta. My final thoughts of this story? Okay, um, I do remember, um, hearing this story from, well, um, a few people about this story. Like, um, I did hear a few people actually, you know, said that this story seemed to be a pretty good pasta or something. And I'm not gonna lie, this one was a good one. Well, it is somewhat of a good story, but I do have some things that I kind of want to make a mention of first. But before I do that, I want to sit here and say this. Um, Dave the Useless actually narrated this story like five years ago, so it was sometime in 2016 when he narrated this story. And I'm going to be honest, this story was a... This story was very... Not good. Like, I mean, it was good, but at the same time, it really wasn't. The only one of the positives I can definitely say about this story was that the grammar was pretty well done in detail. Although, I would have to say that there were a few times when there was some run-on sentences, like places that should have been have periods here and there. So that's one of the things I have to say was that there's places that should have been periods and places that were... Well, commas shouldn't be and should be. So the story was a bit hard to read. Maybe that's just me or something, but yeah, this is an older story, so I'm kind of giving the benefit of the doubt that this is like an older story. So there's definitely that. I mean, the story was just, um, it was cliched as well. That was the, that's the main issue on why this story was not that good. It was just... It's so cliched. Like, I'm not even joking. This story was just, ugh, so cliche. So, yeah. I could definitely say that this story was just definitely, um, a very cliched, um, story for what this is. I'm not denying this right now. This story was honestly just, um, cliched. It's a very cliched story. I'm not denying this one bit. It's just, ugh. Just honestly, it's just cliched. That's the main reason why this story is obviously not that good. 
I mean, there's like somebody, you know, sending $10 to this person and getting this game, you know, being, you know, delivered by a package or something. I mean, what is up with that? Seriously, what the hell is up with, you know, these cliches being added? I mean, this story just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's absolutely cliched to see this. I mean, there's that. There's, like, realistic blood, realistic gore. I'm like, come on. Like, why was that included in the story? I mean, there's no reason for this story to be, you know, there. There's absolutely no reason for that. As well as, you know, how... I mean, there's a lot of cliches in this story that were just thrown in there for the sake of throwing it in there. Like, I mean, there's black holes and there's like, oh my goodness. There's a lot of cliches in this story that really, that really just don't make a whole lot of sense in this, to be honest. This story just didn't, um, I don't know. This story was just not a really good one in my opinion. The main issue is that it's just cliched, but yeah, I mean, some people might think otherwise, but yeah, I just kind of want to state that. This story was just, uh not good. It was just not a good story. Maybe I'm missing something, but maybe you guys can maybe, you know, point out something that I did not say in the comments below. Oh my goodness. This story was just, honestly, this story could have had so much potential to be good. But unfortunately, that's not the case. This story just had too many cliches thrown in there. Like, it's an older story, so I can get that. But at the same time, though, that just kind of ruined the story. But, you know, the detail isn't all that. It kind of looked like a decent storyline and all. But the story of its own self is just not that good. With the cliches. What could have been done to make the story better is if the cliches were not included in it. Then, yeah, the story might be, you know, better. But in this case, though, the story just doesn't really... I just I just didn't really care for the story. I mean, this is kind of why I've been avoiding it because of the cliches that were thrown in there. Just for the sake of throwing it in there. Your opinions might be different from everybody else's, but I just thought, you know, I'd go ahead and state my own opinion. And I think this is an unpopular opinion about this. I mean, some people did have, you know, did like this story. I saw in the comments that people like this. But, I mean, I can understand one thing is that it's not easy to write, like, any gaming pasta or something without including cliches. But, I mean, the cliches that were thrown in there, they're just kind of killed the story. Now, I mean, the grammar is good and all that. And the startup of it, of how the game went out, was somewhat, you know, interesting, but still cliched at the exact same time. Now, I don't know who the original author of this story is, so I'm going to leave this as an ominous for now. If I ever find out who the original author of this story is, I'm going to be sure to give him or her proper credit. If he or she or they or them happen to come across this um, video and they are the author of the story... I'll be sure to give the person proper credit. Right now, I can't say who's the narrator of the story because I don't know. Anyways, with that being the case, that being said, I'm going to sit here and say this now. Like I'm going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these um creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of the story, 5 out of 10. I'm only giving this a 5 out of 10 because the grammar was good and the sentence structuring does need to be worked on at times. The storyline seemed to be interesting, but unfortunately it just went downhill with a bunch of cliches. Too many cliches were added into it that shouldn't be there. And I could definitely tell that this is an older pasta. It's probably a classic pasta, no doubt, or anything like that. But this story was not that great in my opinion. But the only, why I'm giving it like a 5 out of 10 was because of how the grammar is and all that. But yeah, like I said, this is my own opinion. You happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. If you like this story, I respect your opinion. If you don't like it, then I respect your opinion too. Anyways, um, yeah, with that being said, 
What did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So that way, you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out. Thank you.